Welcome to the LeapFrog BI Academy video training series on dimensional modeling. In this video, we're going to be discussing slow changing dimensions. So let's get started by defining what a slow changing dimension is. Basically, it's just a dimension that changes over time. There's some industry standard slow change dimension types that help us keep track of different values across time for our dimensions. So let's start out by talking about slow change dimension type 0. A type 0 dimension does not update a value if it changes. So for example, here we have a data source on top and our customer, customer dimension on bottom, just showing a single record. Right now the data source shows the name value, should an attribute in our dimension being John Doe and the state being Texas. So the dimension has those corresponding values for our customer ID number 432. Now if the source system changes and now reports that customer ID 432 is actually Jane Doe instead of John Doe and Jane lives in California instead of Texas, we're actually going to do nothing to our dimension. We're going to leave that original value for all attributes in our dimension. And that's an SCD type 0. So let's talk about type 1. A type 1 dimension keeps track of the current value of all attributes. So again, using the same example, we have John Doe in, in Texas. That's customer 432. So when we initially load our dimension, we have that same value for the name, John Doe, and state, Texas. Now when the source system changes, to Jane Doe in California and we update our dimension, we're going to see that the attribute values are actually updated in place. So now customer ID number 432 matches our source system. But notice that we have no visibility into what the historical value values were for the name and state attributes. This is an SCD type 1. We're keeping track of only the current value. All right, so what if we need to actually keep track of those historical values? Well, that's where the SCD type 2 comes in. So let's take a look at how this works. Again, using the same data source on top, we have John Doe in Texas. But now we have a modified date in our source. This may or may not be the case, but just for the sake of this example, let's say we have a modified date. And then this modified date is telling us that this record was either created or updated on January 1st, 2013. Okay, so in our dimension now, we're going to add a few fields. We have an effective, expired, and current field. The effective uh, field keeps track of the date that the dimension record became effective. In this case, it's January 1st, 2013. And then we'll talk about expired and current in just a moment. But notice again that our customer ID 432 has two attributes that match the source, John Doe in Texas. All right, so let's see what happens whenever our source system changes. Now the source system shows that John Doe is in California, and that value was modified on the, the 5th of January. So in our dimension, what we're going to do is we're going to expire that initial record. Notice that we now have an expired date of January 4th, and we're going to mark that record as not current with a zero. Then we're going to add an additional record, which has the effective date of January 5th and a current value of 1. So this is now the current version of this record. But notice the state. The state now shows California for our current record, but we still know, we still have visibility that at some point in the past that attribute had a value of Texas. And that point in the past is between the effective and expired date, January 1 and January 4. All right, let's do the same thing again here. Let's say our source system changes once again, but this time it's our name that changed. So now it's Jane Doe. This change occurred on the 10th. Well, the same thing happens. We expire the current version of that, that record in our dimension, and we create a new record. So record number 2 in our dimension now becomes expired on the 9th. We have a new record that's effective as of the 10th. That is now our current record. And of course, it shows that the name is Jane Doe 
in the state of California. Okay, so using a, a type 2 dimension, we can keep track of historical values of attributes. What do we do if uh, we have some attributes that we want to track type 2 and some we want to tra track type 1, for example? Well, that's a hybrid dimension. So let's see how this actually works out. In this example, we're tracking name as an SCD type 1 and state as an SCD type 2. So starting out, same situation, John Doe in Texas, that's the values that are in our dimension. The source system changes. Now we got John Doe in California. Well, state is tracked via SCD type 2, so we need to know that we had a Texas version and a California version of that, that attribute. So we expire the original and create a new record. Okay, that's a standard type 2 behavior. Now let's go back to the name. Now our name changed to Jane Doe. Well, in our dimension, our name is tracked on SCD1 basis, so we update all versions of that customer ID 3432 to show a uh, Jane Doe for the name value. Okay, so let's talk quickly here about what this means to our foreign key lookups uh, in our fact tables. Well, the top here is our fact table and the bottom is a customer dimension. It's a very simple example. And we can see that we need to have uh, pointers in our fact table to the right version of a customer record. So for example, this, this first record here um, is these, both, all of these facts are related to customer ID 432. But we also need to make sure that we pick the version of that dimension record that corresponds to the record time of the fact. And when we do that, we'll select that dimensions surrogate key ID. We'll discuss surrogates later in another video. And we'll place that in a foreign key customer uh, value in our fact. So pretty simply here, whenever we select our foreign key lookup values, we're going to need to have both a business key or natural key uh, on clause or where clause as, as well as a record time selection. So customer ID being 432 and the record time needs to be between the effective and the expired. All right, that's it. So that's slow changing dimensions. Uh, thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the next video in this dimensional modeling, modeling video series.